We are talking about the movie Reborn. This one is directed by Julian Richards and uh, stars uh, Barbara Crampton. Now, on the surface of this, you could say this is um, in the same vein as Carrie, Firestarter, films of that ilk. Now, the story focuses on Barbara Crampton, who is a middle-aged woman, who is an actor, who hasn't had the best of careers, mainly starring in horror movies, much like Barbara Crampton in real life. Here's the thing, is that when she was younger, 16 years ago in fact, she had a child that was stillborn. And this is how the movie starts. And uh, we see in the morgue that there's some type of strange electrical storm or something, and it somehow brings this baby back to life. However, the the morgue technician in the, in the, in the morgue at the time is some kind of like weird necrophiliac type guy and he basically kidnaps uh, this now alive baby and ultimately keeps hold of her for the next kind of 16 years and she's you know things are, are kind of ensued in, in, basically and obviously she's abused and uh, has a very bad upbringing and then she turns 16 and she decides she's going to strike out her own try and find her mother who believes that she was dead but she has now got these kind of like electro uh, electric powers electro electrokinesis or something they, they call it in the film where ultimately she's a bit like electro from from spider-man she can kind of control electricity and stuff like that and ultimately because of her upbringing is somewhat of a murderous uh, type of slasher almost and uh, she ultimately tries to go through, just basically try and find her mother, uh, and obviously the bodies start kind of mounting up on the way. So that's your kind of premise. Now, before we talk about what works and doesn't, what doesn't work, I want to talk about the slasher genre, which I count this as, although technically she's not slashing anyone. Because a lot of those films, and the reason why I'm going to kind of loop this in, is we have these films where we have a, you know, a, a protagonist or an antagonist like Leatherface, uh, or, or, or something like that, and, and quite often with these films, or even in real life when you have serial killers, you'll find that these, these kind of characters have been abused somehow, and ultimately this is, um, this is ultimately what kind of sets the part on this kind of like, on this path of, of being a killer. And that plays a big part into this movie. And here's what this movie does that I think is, almost makes it unique among its peers, is that Although I think we've seen horror films where the antagonist has been, um, you know, abused and ultimately so the way they turned out is not their fault, I don't remember seeing a film that makes the antagonist quite as sympathetic and you really feel like, even though she is a killer and she is a psychopath, it really is not her fault. And you kind of root for her and you kind of want her to succeed to a certain degree, but also you're not kind of like, you, you want the protagonist to succeed as well. And I think part of that is because she has no real uh, evil agenda. She wants to try and find her long lost mother. That's what she wants to do. Now, along the way, she kind of encounters a variety of people and for reasons that I won't go into, she ends up killing them, but she's never setting out to do that necessarily. So it makes it for a really intriguing premise that I feel is makes this movie stand out from its peers. So it's a really kind of like uh, an exciting movie in the fact that you have ultimately a slasher kind of set up. We have a female slasher. I know she's not, you know, she's not slashing and she's not killing with the weapons, but it, it reminds you of a slasher type film. But one where you really do feel an emotional resonance with the antagonist. And kind of, you kind of want to see her build this kind of like bond with um, with her mother, and she kind of like, when they eventually meet, she kind of doesn't tell her that obviously it's you know she's her daughter and stuff, and and the Barbara Crampton thinks she's kind of like a student and her, her acting class and stuff like that, and you're kind of you know you're waiting for that moment for the penny drops and everything. So I thought that was absolutely fantastic. I thought it was such a clever way. Of, of making a kind of a slasher thriller movie, but but have it maybe there has a little bit of originality, and I'm sure there's been films that maybe done it before, but I can't think of any. Like I said, the closest I can kind of get to is Carrie, where she kills loads of people, but you still feel 
sorry for her, you have empathy for her, and it's kind of like this. So even though you know the, the, the setup is slightly different with Carrie, you, you definitely have that sort of same connection to a test than you do with Carrie, I feel, in, in this kind of like, this kind of analogy here. So I thought that was fantastic. And I thought Barbara Crampton in this movie was great. You know, um, she now, and at this point in her career is, is, a, is a horror icon. To you. She's been in a whole bunch of stuff. I recently saw her in Death House, which was terrible. But this is a fantastic movie to a certain degree. So I thought this was really good. A really interesting premise. I thought the, the performances were all very good. I thought the direction was tight. Um, the, uh, the electrical effects are good, but they're not OTT. Um, you know, it's just kind of like stuff shorting out and stuff like that. They don't go crazy like, you know, Big Trouble in Little China or anything like that. Um, I thought, I thought the, the, the kind of the electrical effects were quite understated, but we're going to come back to the effects and the negatives in just a minute. Uh, so that was all quite good. Um, you've got Mike Parry in here, so Michael Parry, who again is a kind of veteran B-movie -me -me actor, and he's a kind of a police detective. And again, I thought the character work that they've done with his character makes him, you know, again, you know, he's he's got a bit of a backstory, and you kind of feel he's um, somewhat kind of sympathetic, and you kind of like you kind of root for him as well. So I thought that all that was very well done. It's a kind of a movie movie where you think, ah, at some point, you know, the penny's got a drop. You're not quite sure how you want the movie to play out in your own mind. If you're thinking, man, there's kind of all these different sort of like things that can happen. And ultimately, it's got to come to a head at some point. But what happens? So what about the negatives? Okay, so a couple of things. And this is this one is a real shame because it was it was avoidable. There is some really terrible CGI blood effects. Uh, and also a couple of like little fire effects as well. And it looks like they were just knocked up on an afternoon on, on After Effects. There are a couple of instances where people get killed. And there's an explosion of CGI blood. It looks like they've got practical blood there as well. But the CGI blood looks absolutely terrible. And here's the thing. I was so invested in the story in this movie. is whenever they, they, you have this kind of like CGI blood explosion. Immediately it takes you out. So I wish they just could have took that out. I don't think it's necessary to have this big explosion of blood across the screen. Um, the other things, okay, so the, 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 the guy who's this necrophiliac um, lab technician is a little bit on the nose, particularly when kind of like it's hinted at that the doctors kind of know about it. I don't thought, come on, you know, come on. Um, so that was a little bit silly, I thought, to be honest. And I would have given this movie a higher mark had it not have been for the ending on two fronts. So there is the stinger, I suppose, the very kind of last scene. It just doesn't make sense. It, I don't know why it's in there. It's like, uh, I won't I get without saying what it is. It's just like, that could have just been cut out, uh, if you ask me, because I, I don't think it, it doesn't make any sense it looks like things have just kind of like gone back to a status quo. It doesn't make sense. I wish they'd cut that bit out. And the actual climax of it, the kind of like the, um, the confrontation, so to speak, between parties that are involved, I don't think was quite as well handled as it could have been. Again, I'm trying to be vague because I don't want to give away spoilers. But yeah, not quite as... Not quite as uh, um, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more emotional resonance in there, I feel, took, without kind of going into um, too much detail, because I feel the movie did such a good job until that point. However, you know, they, they're a small part of the film. The movie as a whole, for the most part, is a very, very entertaining movie that is absolutely, absolutely kept me glued to the screens. I thought it's, it's a captivating story with intriguing characters and good performances. So overall, I'll give this movie an, a, a 7 out of 10. I was going to give it an 8, but like I've said, the ending for me just knocked it down a peg. So I'm going to give it a, a 7 out of 10. But even so, I would suggest that this is still a very entertaining movie uh, that has got a really kind of strong premise. And if you like things like Carrie, like Firestarter, you're going to kind of get a kick out of this. And, and, and movies that aren't quite clear cut, you know, that you can kind of empathise with the kind of the, the, the bad, quite, quite the bad guy. It makes it for a great watch, I've got to say. So if you like a bit more of a 
cerebral, emotional horror film, then this may be the one for you. So 7 out of 10. What did you think of it? Leave me a comment, and I shall look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.